It's no secret that humans have an outsized impact on our planet. We're the most widely distributed species on Earth, and our impacts can be seen and felt across each of Earth's seven continents and five oceans. These impacts can be seen most notably in the disappearance of wild places. It's estimated that humans have severely altered at least 75% of Earth's surface and 66% of its oceans. One million species are at risk of being lost. Extinction rates are higher than they have been than at any time in the last 10 million years. But one movement is aiming to reverse these trends. That movement is called 30 by 30, and its goal is simple. Protect 30% of Earth's land and waters by the year 2030. Achieving that goal is the difficult part. But by protecting 30% of Earth's surface from development, we can preserve biodiversity, improve the global economy, help mitigate the effects of climate change, and more. And while 30 by 30 is easy to comprehend initially, understanding the specifics of the movement can help us better understand its significance and how we can go about achieving it. And what better way to understand these specifics than by answering those age-old questions, who, what, when, where, why, and how? Now, some of these are easier to answer than others. What, when, and where we've already talked about. The 30 by 30 movement aims to protect 30% of Earth's surface by 2030. What I want to focus on, though, are the remaining questions. Why is 30 by 30 important? How do we achieve it? And who is responsible for making it happen? Let's start with the question of why 30 by 30 is important. After all, it's for these reasons why the movement matters. It's for these reasons why we should take action in the first place. And we've already seen some of these reasons at the top of the video. Those statistics and others come from a 2019 report by the International Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, or IPBES for short. That report helps us understand just how much of an impact humans are having on the planet. Here are just a few of the things that they found. As mentioned earlier, 1 million species are at risk of extinction, including 40% of amphibians, almost 33% of reef-forming corals, and a third of marine mammals. Nearly one third of Earth's surface is dedicated to agriculture, this number is nearly 75% for Earth's fresh water. The amount of resources, both renewable and non-renewable, that have been extracted from the Earth since 1980 has nearly doubled. We dump more than 300 million tons of industrial waste into our waters each year, and agricultural runoff has created upwards of 400 so-called dead zones in our oceans. These numbers are grim, and unfortunately they don't stop there. But these numbers are also hard to understand just by themselves. It helps to understand just why these things are happening and how they affect us. Which, the IPBES report can help us with that too, since it also lays out the top five reasons for why nature continues to disappear. By far the biggest reason is land use and sea use change. This is the process of converting lands from their natural state to a developed one for human use. This includes things like urban development, resource extraction, or, in many cases, agriculture. Land use and sea use change affects forests, grasslands, wetlands, oceans, and many other habitats. And the more land we consume, the less remains available for nature. The second reason we're losing nature is the over-harvesting of plants and animals themselves. Instead of destroying their habitat, we're exploiting them directly. Overfishing is a particular concern here, with more than 33% of marine fish stocks being harvested at unsustainable levels. Third is climate change. The more rapidly our climate changes, the less time plants and animals have to adapt to it. Combined with habitat loss, climate change is a particularly troubling problem for Earth's biodiversity. Human pollution, the fourth main cause, degrades habitats and poses problems not only for plants and animals, but for humans too. And lastly, Invasive and alien species threaten native plants and animals. Our interconnected global economy often means that species are transported all over the world, both on purpose and on accident. These species typically have no natural predators in their new habitats and outcompete native species for resources. But this isn't just a case of protecting plants and animals, though. Our impacts on the environment impact our lives, too. For instance, nature is crucial for public health. Not only do we rely on it for medical purposes, but protecting it can even help prevent the spread of diseases. The more habitat we clear, the more likely we are to come into contact with wild animals, 
and the more likely we are to contract zoonotic diseases from them. Or take food production. 75% of crops used for human food rely on pollinators. Diminishing habitat for pollinators puts our food systems at risk. Nature even benefits our economy. Globally, it's estimated that nature provides $125 trillion in ecosystem services each year. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Nature can help us in the fight against climate change, it's culturally significant to native and indigenous people around the world, and can even help improve our mental well-being. So that's why 30 by 30 is important, but what can we do about it? How do we go about protecting 30% of Earth's surface? The first thing we're going to need is government involvement and cooperation. On a global scale, only governments have the real power and resources to undertake such a monumental task. By committing to 30 by 30 at a national level, countries signal their intent to stave off the extinction crisis and preserve our biodiversity for future generations. After that commitment, though, comes the actual process of preserving land and water. Our focus should be on protecting areas that are key for biodiversity and that are critical for ecosystems to function. We should also focus on creating an interconnected system of protected areas, since the ability to migrate and reproduce are critical to ensure wildlife populations are healthy. And finally, we need to get the word out. Which brings us to the final question we need to answer. Who is responsible for carrying out the 30 by 30 initiative? Tons of individuals, private businesses, nonprofits, and national governments have already signed on to try and make this movement a reality. But there needs to be more. We need to spread the word as far and as wide as possible to encourage more individuals, more businesses, more nonprofits, and especially more governments to take action. So sign the 30 by 30 petition. Tell your friends about 30 by 30. Write your elected officials about it. Share this video to spread the word. And that's how, together, we can protect 30% of the Earth by 2030. If you want to learn more about issues like this one, or protected areas in general, feel free to subscribe to the channel below and stay tuned for more videos about parks and other protected areas. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.